Cesarean or C-section deliveries account for almost one-third of births in Canada, and the number is rising. Still, C-sections are considered the unnatural way to have a baby, and many moms feel disappointed or shamed for having one. Dr. Marjorie Dixon is back with us now to talk about the stigma surrounding C-sections, and she's joined by CityLine lifestyle expert Natalie Preddy, uh, who's a mom of three, uh, as well as Joey Cole, co-founder of Naples Labels, and a mom of six. I haven't seen you in forever. Oh, it's been a while. You're like aging in reverse. Like, thank you for coming. <laughs> okay, Doc, I'm going to start with you. Uh, what are some of the reasons uh, C-sections might happen over vaginal births? So generally, they can be either elective or planned yep. or emergency. Okay. Um, when they're elective, they're planned for a reason. So if you have a health problem that you can't deliver a baby vaginally, that happens. Mm -hmm. When you have an emergency, it's a little different. So sometimes mm -hmm. people have labored and the baby doesn't fit out, mm -hmm. or the cervix just doesn't respond to the medications that we're giving to soften up the cervix to open up. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the placenta is over the co covering of where the baby should come out, and it would be a precipitous hemorrhage, so we cut the baby out for safety. Yeah. Um, and then sometimes there's a true knot in the cord, so if the baby were to push through the vagina, that would cut off its blood supply, so you have to cut out the baby. So really you're doing it for safety of baby mm -hmm. and sometimes the health of mom. Absolutely. Okay, Nat, so I want to talk to you. Mm -hmm. Mommy of three, how was your most recent birth experience? Uh, and was it different from the first two? Yeah, so the first two were vaginal and I felt like a superhero afterwards. <laughs> I was like, look what I just did! Yeah! Um, but then the third was an emergency. Um, we had to get him out for, for his, his health. And, you know, I felt a little bit afterwards like uh, less of a mom in, mm -hmm. that, in that instance. You know, I didn't have those superhero feelings. And, and you know, I think there's so much planning in, when it comes to having a baby and we're expected to have this natural birth. And, and you know, because that didn't happen, I felt like I had already let him down. I get it. I'm not going to judge because I had a natural childbirth with my first one and it was horrific. Like everybody was like, why did you take the drugs? I'm like, I don't know. I guess I wanted to be the superhero. Yeah. Never again. Yeah. Like that didn't happen again. Look, I've had, six, I've You've had, had six. six of them. I've had six C-sections. I know. Yes. I'm in a medical textbook. Thank you. Are you really? <laughs> and, um, yeah. And look, my situation was I ended up in an emergency C-section with the first one. I no. wasn't a great candidate for a V-back. Mm -hmm. I would just say also Feedback for is what? Uh, vaginal, vaginal after, after cesarean. Yeah, okay. after, birth after, after cesarean. cesarean. Yeah. Right. yeah. So, you know, I had my six, but I would say, you know, a lot of people say it's, you know, you can only have the three, which I know that's probably, the doc would say, the way to go. Uh -huh. But if you do want to have more children, do talk to your doctor about it. Yeah. Because I did have, I did have the six. And I, I... I know what you're saying. I think what happens with this, I think we need to think about the language a bit, like a natural birth. Yes. And then also think people say things like, did you really need to have a C-section? Mm. Or, you know, and I, I think- So judgy. I know. So and there is this sort of Hollywood thing where people think it's the easy way out, right? right. Yes. Yes. Like I've had people say, oh, did you get a tummy tuck? I'm like, oh, I did not at get- At the time of your cesarean? Uh -huh. We don't oh. do that. And you I'm don't like, do that, do you? We Does don't that even do exist? That. We don't get free, no. well, we get free this is Canada. Surgery. <laughs> uh, maybe it was somewhere else in the universe they would do it, but no. When you deliver your baby, we deliver your baby, we cut the baby out, we hand it over, and it's time to raise You did enough. You made a yeah. human. Oh right? Goodness. Like, you don't have you to have a flat stomach now, too, when you go human. home. That's yeah. phenomenal. So you didn't have any issues. Like, you weren't, like, fighting anything. You weren't feeling less superhero -y. No, I, I felt okay. You felt I, okay I, I felt it. okay, but it was all that I, I, I really knew as well. And yeah. I'm pretty, you know, I'm, I'm pretty okay with how I do things. Chill. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, yes, you are. But there's an upside to a cesarean section, too. Really? What is it? You save your vagina forever. <laughs> <laughs> and there it is. Save the vagina. Save the vagina. Yeah, mine's yeah. ruined. Okay, so... <laughs> This whole idea of it being designer or it being lazy or easy or like the celebrity's way out of having the C-section, where does that misconception come from? Well, there, I mean, any part of giving birth to life mm -hmm. can be laborious. Right. So after you've had a cesarean section, you have had a major surgery. Yes. So you're raising a kid and dealing with having a major surgery. Yeah. Recovering. The recovery period also, you're at greater risk because 
you're at greater risk of a bladder infection mm -hmm. or of potentially bleeding into your incision, your incision coming apart. You don't have to really deal with that when you're delivering yeah. vaginally. Remember, we have an audience full of pregnant people. I know, <laughs> I know. But... I feel like they should yeah. know, though. I mean, if yeah. you want to yeah. know, if you don't do this, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> but look, it, it, vaginal deliveries have all kinds of stuff we don't talk about either. Vaginas tear mm -hmm. from stem to stem. They That's can, right. They right? can, yeah. And, and then your bladder can fall out Sorry, later. don't leave. Just saying, don't leave. It's, it's okay. okay. It'll all be I've great. had three kids, yeah, too, and all survives. Yes. But, but you have to understand that if there's an indication to do it, mm -hmm. there's nothing you should be ashamed of. You, you made your kid live. Yeah, yeah. Congratulations. Well, right? Thank you. Yeah. Do you thank you. Do you still feel the st stigma now? Would you hear about it from other moms? There's still like sort of a stigma, a C-section stigma? Uh, I think there is a little bit. I, yeah. I, I feel like, as you said, with the, the language around it, the natural birth. Yeah. Um, but, you know, and we were talking to some of the pregnant ladies that were backstage and saying, you know what? As long as you are getting baby out mm -hmm. happy and yeah. healthy yeah. and you're healthy, mm -hmm. yeah. you just grew a human and then got it out. Like, Absolutely. That's phenomenal. Yeah. Tracy, I think where it stems from, though, is often I think when you have a disappointment, it can be a trigger to guilt mm -hmm. and shame. And, you know, mm -hmm. of course I wanted to deliver my baby. I went through all this labor and, and it didn't happen. And I think when that happens, you know, that's where those feelings come from. And I think mm -hmm. there's a lot of that surrounding motherhood. When you look at... You know, infertility, the shame yeah. is not mm -hmm. spoken yeah. about. You know yeah. this. Know you think mm -hmm. about miscarriage, and it's like you don't tell anybody you're pregnant for 12 weeks. Well, you could lose your baby, go to work, pretend everything's fine, and you're you're grieving. No, and yeah. yes. So I think there's that stigma. I think we need to start sharing on social media. Show our scars. Come yeah. on, moms. Yeah. Let's show. Yeah. This is natural and it saves lives. We're getting there. Because yeah. I know yeah. when I had my first and I had postpartum depression, it was like, oh my goodness, I did not know where to go. Yeah. I didn't yeah. feel like people were talking mm -hmm. about it. And when I finally did talk about it in a blog, so there was an outpouring. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I was like, you know that Mother's Day I just posted? It was terrible. Yeah. Like, I'm sad, you know? Yeah. So we need to talk about it. I want to talk about Julie a little bit more because uh, Jules you just released your first book called like a mother mm -hmm. tell me a little bit about what this about you said you do things your way and you really do <laughs> right well yeah I just thought like after so much time it's been 20 years since I started Mabel's labels yeah. I have so much to share about raising the six kids raising neurodiverse kids raising yes. queer kids yes. um, running a business that started in a basement and is now a like best love brand and so mm -hmm. it's full of life hacks mom hacks and all the all that good stuff that goes along my very second or third purchase of Mabel's labels yeah. are still being stuck onto their oh, yeah. hockey water bottles <laughs> and their clothing when they go to camp so the business was brilliant you've done it better than anyone I know so thank well you. done thank and thank you for sharing that with all